Hello, my name is Aaron with iBoard Repair, and today I'm going to be working on an iPhone 7 Plus. So, I've done nothing to this phone other than open it, but you can see this is a very, very bad case. Um, the water damage is um, all over the place. Um, so I can tell you right from the beginning um, how I approach these devices. Um, it's actually pretty formulaic. I do the same thing for uh, these cases every single time, of course, with some little adjustments for each individual case. Um, but every single time, um, what I'm going to do with this phone is I'm going to remove all the chips that have corrosion and I'm just going to replace the ones that are required for data recovery. So that will be uh, replacing Chestnut, the image chip, and uh, sometimes uh, the charging chip, uh, TriStar, and everything else I just remove. And uh, tackling iPhone data problems that way is, is uh, in my opinion, the best way to do it. It's fairly safe and it's uh, very efficient. Um, so I'll be right back. I'm going to remove this board and um, get started with this. Okay, so I have the motherboard out. Let's take a look at it. So the front looks uh, pretty clean, which is nice to see. Um, usually when it's that corroded on the inside, um, you know, you'll see corrosion more widespread than this. Just some salt or um, mineral deposits up here. Nothing too bad. The back looks a lot worse, but it might be looking okay underneath these uh, be stripped still. So I have a um, VCC main short right here. That might be V. That might be VDD boost. Actually, um, not sure. Either way, this cap probably uh, protected the board quite a bit. Let me switch over to uh, big scope. But this cap, um, <coughs> it probably went bad early, and it uh, it dumped all the voltage into ground rather than um, damaging the rest of the board, and that's probably why this board doesn't look um, as bad as I initially expected it to look. So if I take this off, I wonder if it's going to be clean or if it's going to be extremely messed up. Um, but because of that cap there, that, that kind of went short first, I'm thinking, um, it, it might be clean under here. And already it looks like that theory is incorrect because I'm seeing corrosion. But not too much, not too bad. Um, VDD boost, the boost chip itself, the boost I see, like it almost exploded. Look at this. So that in itself isn't too bad. We can fix that. The thing is, um, this is the CPU EEPROM. It's right next to it. And. Um, that's not good if that took um, any boost voltage or main voltage or anything like that. It, it runs off of 1.8 volts and uh, and you can see like this just exploded and it might have it might have dumped big voltage into the 1.8 lines that are in here and that could have fried the CPU. So that might make it unrecoverable. Um, if anything, if it looks like the whole job is done and I'm still stuck in DFU mode or recovery mode, it's likely because my CPU fried. So we'll have to hope that's not the case there. Let's remove the bottom um, cover right here and see what it looks like down here. And down here it's pretty clean. So it looks like chestnut, the image chip may have taken a little bit of a, a voltage spike or something. There looks to be some burn marks on the outside of it down there. A little bit more problems next to uh, Tigris, the, the charging IC down here. 
so that might uh, need some work I'm not sure what this resistor is but it might be important in fact let me check what that is now So USB detect. So that's what that's what detects the charge port. So um, the charger going into the charge port, I should say. So if there's a problem there, um, it will most likely just manifest in in uh, not recognizing the charger. So all of this up here is usually not too big of a problem. I'll just remove this IC here, it's not needed. And then I'll clean up the rest of this area up here. I don't believe any of these resistors or capacitors are actually required. Um, so that you, this area doesn't usually give me too much of a problem, but it does usually get corroded like that. Um, but it cleans up okay. So I'll remove this top shield now and uh, see if I can see anything in there. I have a feeling it might be clean. Shield is removed. Let's get a view of that now. And not too much corrosion. So minor cleanup will be fine there. This is my um, this is my boost coil, it boosts the voltage for the boost IC that also exploded, so this also exploded. I don't usually see boost um, take so much damage like that, so that's, that's uh, interesting to see. So this will need to, you know what, this won't need to be replaced. So this needs to be replaced if the boost IC is on the board, um, otherwise boost IC doesn't work properly and uh, it won't boot. Um, but you don't need that on the, you don't need that working if you remove boost IC and you just uh, short um, VDD main to VDD boost. Um, 
then you kind of just get around needing that whole chip and, and uh, just needing that whole chip. Okay, so let's start. Let's just brush it first, and then we'll start to remove the chips that uh, are going to be causing problems. Let's uh, see which caps over here are what on OZXW. So this one right here is main, that might be bad. Um, this one's actually boost. This one is boost as well. And then I can see a crack in this um, capacitor, and this is a VDD main, so let's just remove that. So this needs to be clean still, obviously. This is um, my 1V8 SD-RAM line. So let's see if that's short. It might be 1V1 SD-RAM. I just know it's an SD-RAM line. So it's showing a partial short. It's most likely just the cap, but hopefully it didn't cause any any problems um, down the line to the actual RAM and CPU. I'll check what those two caps are next to it. One is main, the other one is uh, the other SD RAM line. Let's just take both of them off. I don't like the way either of them look. I'll have to double check uh, what's going on down here. In fact, I'll just keep pulling this so I can get a better view.
right, so I'll just pull boost now. In fact, I'm going to pull this whole thing off too so I can uh, look under there as well. I am pretty worried about the EEPROM next to it. I really hope there's not a problem there. This may be the worst uh, boost chip I've ever seen. I've never seen uh, never seen it just f get completely fried like this. It's actually very lucky that um, we know that that trick where we can just short boost to main in order to get it to boot. Because otherwise, uh, I don't know if I would have been able to get this one, this this chip to be here. It's bad. So I normally um, short boost to, to main at these pads underneath here, 
I don't know if any of these pads are going to be good enough to do that, so I think I'm probably going to short boost to main at a capacitor instead, and, and that should still work fine. There's almost no pads left here. This is nuts. <laughs> I hope I don't have any board shorts right here. but some of the traces might be shorted together. I'm just going to dig out all these spots that look bad. They, they just look so bad. They look like there might be shorts. really hope it's not too many layers deep. Okay, I'm going to see if um, main and boost is clear yet. So let me see if I can find a spot on uh, main. So these two are both uh, main, so let's see if it's short. Nope, not short. 0.34 is an, uh, normal. Let's check boost now. Boost is still short. Might just be one of these caps right here because they look pretty bad. Hopefully it was just one of those two caps. Still short. So hopefully the board's not short like I was uh, afraid it might be um, because there's not too many caps left to, to check. So I'll I'll inject into this point um, to see if I can find uh, where my heat's going. I do have a feeling that my board's going to be short over here, so I, I think uh, I should keep an eye out in that area. So here's the line, that's the area I suspect, let's see, hopefully it's not that, it would be nice if it's not, oh it's still over here, um, 
Let's just check that again. So it looked to me like it was over here, but it could have uh, just been melting uh, naturally. Hello. Can you sleep there? Aaron? Have a good one. Thank you, appreciate it. Yep, still right there. I actually looked up at my DC power supply right when it was giving the signal, so let me do it one more time just so I can. It's probably those uh those camera ICs that have the boost line going underneath them is almost surely what the problem's gonna be. Yeah, right there. Okay. That should be easy enough to deal with. You know, it looks like I just may have had like half the capacitor on there still from the the one that was there before. Maybe that's all it was. Let's see if it's clear now. Yeah, now it's clear. Good. So now I'm just gonna um, attach boost to main. And I can see if it boots, but I should probably check um, to make sure none of my chestnut lines are short. So I'll do that real quick. And I'm still a little bit worried about Tigris over here too, my charging IC. Check where the lines are under chestnut. I think it's these guys. Yeah. So all these caps right here are the chestnut lines. Just want to make sure none of them are short. Seem okay. So yeah, now I'll just uh, connect boost to main, shorting them together to, to make that circuit work. And then, um, then I'll connect it to my DC power supply and I'll see if it looks like it's booting or not. So let me double check where I have both of those lines. I know I have boost right here and right here. So let's see where the nearest main is. So I have main right here. So I'll connect a wire from here to here. And that should be the easiest way to do it. Well, you know what, there's an, there's an even easier way. So right here is main and right here is boost. So I'll connect a wire, those two spots. Should be easy. I think this tip is going to be a little too big. Oops. These tips have been through a lot. I really do need to replace them. But these ones were actually aftermarket tips. For whatever reason, they last longer than original or, or anything else. Um, but these are like old school aftermarket tips. I've tried to buy more aftermarket tips since then, and uh, they're nowhere near the same quality. Like even the cut is, is nowhere near as good.
and that should be good enough. Take some wire. I use pretty thin wire. I have a uh, 0.09 millimeters. 0 0.009 millimeters is what it actually is. should be good enough. No, oh, that's not touching anything, that's fine. So let's see, maybe it's booting now. Now you can see my uh, DC power supply, so you can see with me what, what a booting phone looks like, or what a not booting phone looks like, depending on what happens right now. Let me see where the power button line is. Go. And um, it's giving more um, amperage than it should. So there's some like a, oh, there's a boot loop there. Let's see if it does it again. Yep, it's boot looping. So the boot loop is not good. Um, I'm very concerned that it's gonna be uh, my EEPROM chip. Because it's it's a uh, it's very possible that um, that took a voltage spike. But I'll replace Chestnut and I'll replace Tigris just to make sure, because that will be the next easiest thing to check. The EEPROM chip looks okay from the side, but who knows. So real quickly, I'll just replace these two chips. It's simple to do so, um, so we, we might as well to, to make sure that that's not the problem.
And it looked okay under there, so I don't expect that was the problem. Also do the same for for Tigris here. That didn't look too bad either. So I, I kind of wish I would have seen more corrosion under one of these because it would uh, give me a better indication that that might have actually been the problem. Um, but even without too much corrosion, um, the chips could have gone bad. So maybe that's the case. I was kind of thinking about seeing if I should check for image before I did that, if there was an image in the boot loop, but I didn't. No, I kind of wish I did. Good enough. So before I do anything else, I'm going to check uh, the diode mode readings under these pads to see if uh, anything's abnormal.
So the first whole row should give me no beeps. Second row should uh four threes, four six oh, so three, three oh. Oh no. Four six oh okay. Ground three, ground four. Ground, 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 three, ground, four. And then three is 007. So three, 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 O, O, seven. Good. And then all O's and a four at the end for the last row. Nothing, 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 nothing. Okay, so that looks normal, so I'll grab a new uh, Tigris and see if we notice anything different. Little too much flux, but now it takes them out. Okay, that looks fine. So I'll pump the boot again and uh, see if we notice anything different or not. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put on um, chestnut. First I'll go ahead and check that uh, nothing's short at the pads and I want to see if I have any image or not. This boot loop though is, a, is really not a good sign. Um, it's not looking super positive for this one. You know, I'm just really not too sure about the, the coil here. I was pretty sure it wasn't needed, but but what if it is? I'm just going to go ahead and replace it and um, see if that gives me any difference. Because, it, because I've seen in the past, uh, once that coil was gone but the boost chip was still on there, 
you know what, I think that main just connects to boost through there, and I've already done that. But it, like I, as I was saying, um, I've seen in the past uh, when boost is not correct that it gives kind of a high amp draw, kind of like what I'm seeing. Um, so it's worth it to check. I'll find a boost coil and I'll be right back. Alright, here's my boost coil. Harvested from another iPhone board. I don't really expect this will fix it. But it's not impossible, and if it does, I'll be very happy.
I'm gonna put a uh, image chip on here. I have an Apple logo. And then after that, I'm going to connect it to the PC. And I'm going to see um, if it connects in DFU mode or recovery mode. And if it does, I'll try an update. And um, I'm really just looking for um, like error 9. I think this is going to be data corruption at this point. Um, just because of that, all that voltage that was going all over the place. Another strange thing I just noticed. Um, there's solder balls in here and right here, and I didn't heat. No, I heated this area. Maybe that caused that. That's possible. Either way, I'll just remove this chip. testing on there let's see if we have any image and then uh, let's see if we can you know verify an error 9 or, or something like that should probably check that area too but I think it's okay so grab chest gonna be right back That's the orientation.
now I'll grab a battery, a screen, and a charge port, and um, let's see if it's uh, giving us image. Let's see if it's prompting the boot from the charge port, and let's see if it connects to a PC or not. So, a lot of potential problems here, all stemming from right there, I believe. You can even see the burn marks coming right up against the EEPROM there, which is why I think we're having the problem. Alright. Let's connect this and, uh, and see what it's doing. As you know, um, not every job is recoverable. Sometimes um, the voltage hits areas that uh, it just it cannot deal with. So, you know, that is, that is a possibility. Well, the screen really doesn't want to connect. I'll just uh, try one more time. If not, I'll just grab a different one. Now I'll grab a different screen. So it was kind of hard to connect, but it went. Okay, so when we connect this to a charge port, let's see what it does. Um, if I have a charge port. Okay, let's see if we have any image or, or what's going on here. I don't see any image. I'm seeing about a 0.4 amp draw, which actually normally indicates like a main shore or, or something. But, uh,. So I did notice that there was like also heat on the board when I connected this battery. So this is, it's acting a little strange. I'm not sure what this is indicating to me. Um, I'm going to prompt it to boot again and see it's, if it's still doing what it was before. And uh, I'll probably use a technique in a moment that I don't normally use. Oh, interesting. So it did reshort. So I have a short on main or boost again. So that's interesting. I 
main's connected to boost, so it doesn't really matter where the short is. Yeah, so I have a short again. So I'm going to inject again into main and see if we can find the short. But um, it's a little bit strange. It doesn't normally happen. Let's just see what we can find. Check this bottom half of the board. Oh, okay, so I didn't put chestnut on properly. So I haven't messed up putting a chip on in, in quite a long time. Um, I wonder if the chip is short or if I messed it up. Okay, well, I made a really bad mistake. Um, I put this chip on upside down. So this dot is supposed to be on this corner. Um, I'm going to have to double check the lines and see if, uh, if that was, I mean, no matter what, that was a really, a really bad mistake.
So the dot's on the right corner this time, the proper corner I should say. Okay, well, it looks like it's exactly the same as it was before, so that's good at least. You know, it's not even boot looping now, so it might be booting. Hopefully we, hopefully we got it resolved. Grab my charger again. Okay, let's see now when I prompt it to boot, what it's gonna do. No image still, and still showing me. What is it showing me? Showing me a more normal amp draw down here not quite all the way normal hmm Still no image. Now I really don't like this connector on here. I'm having a whole lot of trouble connecting it every time. <laughs> and that's why. I'm gonna have to replace this connector. I mean, I'm not sure exactly how this happened, but it happened. You know, this phone um, may be booting now. I think we may have gotten it. I'm not quite sure exactly what we did that stopped it from looping because it was looping So I'll do a, a real quick replacement of this connector. It's a uh, you know I'm not really the best at replacing connectors. I'll admit, so it won't look perfect. Um, I just make them good enough to work, and it's just data recovery, so it really doesn't matter as long as it works. Um, I do have an appointment right now, however, so I will be back in um, in a little bit of time. You won't notice any time though. So be back soon.
Okay, so I'm back. My meeting's over. Um, as you can see, this connector has been damaged. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just remove this connector, put a new one on. Um, hopefully, it won't take too long. Let's do that now. So I'm not going to do, uh, I'm not going to worry about how good this connector looks, I'm just going to try to do it fairly quickly. I just need this to be connected enough. It doesn't have to be like the super most strong connection ever. No, I'm sorry, I just realized I didn't have my my mic next to me, so I was probably speaking very lowly. Or you can probably hear very lowly. 
Okay, well, this is obviously not the right connector. I'm working with a 7 plus, not a 7, no wonder. Okay, let's see if I have a 7 plus. I, I don't know. One, one moment. Okay, so that was another <laughs> another really dumb mistake because I realized I had been trying to plug in an iPhone 7 screen into this connector, which is obviously why it didn't fit. Um, yeah, that was dumb. Should be okay though. I always try to carefully align this and then it almost doesn't matter because it almost always moves but okay so let's just do it should be good enough so I like to just melt the flux first at a lower temperature and then I raise the temperature once uh, once it's kind of already been flowing Now I'll raise the temperature. Okay, hopefully that's good enough. That looks like it's probably not though. Let's see. At the, at the very least, I guess that my mistakes prove that this is like live in real time and I'm not fixing things beforehand and I'm showing you that way. Uh, because I do make mistakes every once in a while. That was, just, that was a really dumb mistake. Simple but dumb. I just uh, was trying to connect a... Uh, 7 screen to a 7 plus. It actually does look like these pens are secured so it might be good now. Yeah, it looks good enough. Let's see if it boots. Okay, I'll grab a, a new screen. One moment. Okay, let's see uh, if something better is happening now or not.
Hey, image. That's good. So this was not my most uh, elegant uh, recovery. I made two really uh, boneheaded mistakes um, that I almost never make. Uh, so that, that was uh, interesting. I put the chestnut chip on backwards, which I haven't done in forever. So that that was really dumb. I don't even know how that happened because I was I thought I had checked that before. Um, and then I put in I tried to put an iPhone 7 screen on a 7 Plus. So obviously that wouldn't work too. Um, so both really dumb mistakes, but it looks like we're in two five eight zero two five. Yep, we're in. It's reading battery data. Everything looks normal. So that's uh that's great. Um, when it comes down to it, this was still a pretty standard job. Uh, it's gonna be a it's going to be working now. We're going to be able to pull the data from it. And uh, everything's going to be fine with this one. So let's see if I can do a little recap just because this was quite a long video. Uh, I'll pull open the scope so you can see again. So to very to start with, I noticed there's a ton of corrosion on the you know just opening the phone, um, but there wasn't very much corrosion under the CPU shield. There was no real corrosion down here. Um, most of my problems were with VDD main and VDD boost up here. Uh, the big surprise was this uh, VDD boost uh, chip. It completely fried the board right here. Um, um, that chip is okay to remove as long as you connect boost to main. So that's what I did here. Um, I ended up replacing chestnut and tigris, but uh, it turned out to not really be necessary. Um, I guess I don't have too much more to say about this one. This one was a little unique. Uh, I did make a couple of mistakes, but uh, you know um, I show those mistakes so you can you know learn from them yourselves. Uh, even though this one was just more of a not paying close enough attention to what I was doing. Um, I'm glad that the data wasn't ruined by anything. I'm glad the data wasn't ruined by the voltage spike to, to, to boost. Um, everything seems to be okay. So I, I thank you for watching this one. I hope you come again soon. And, uh, you know, have a good day. Bye.